This next spot is kind of fun. Um, not mandatory, but I highly recommend it. Let me tell you why. Especially uh, for you guys that are not painting and not using any exotic cloth like carbon fiber or Kevlar. Um, what we're going to do here is we're going to put in floorboards. And in order to put in floorboards, you know, there's a couple of ways you can do it. And I've done it, you know, both ways. You can either apply the floorboards directly to the boat, uh, which works just fine. But you can't make any mistakes. Once you put them down, that's it. They're down. And if you're going to get them out, the only way to get them out is grind them out. So I prefer not to do that. So uh, the plans for this boat have uh, patterns for supports for floorboards. And, and it specifically tells you how to lay out your floorboards. Now, you know, there's leeway with that. You know, the, the, the patterns essentially just take a waterline of the boat and then they cut it for... Uh, where I thought it was appropriate to put floorboards um, and then I created patterns for each one of the uh, supports and then they're, they're uh, glued down and I glue these down using instant epoxy this one's not glued down yet and on this boat it was simple enough just to do it at every single station um, so you know I can already see where the stations were so it's easy for me to go ahead and put these down I have found um, that there's ways to do this that makes your life a lot easier. So I'm going to walk you through the whole process of, of uh, working here from a template. All right, so here's the pattern that you get, and it shows the cutout, and it shows uh, the scupper hole. Now, um, I, I may have told you this, but a scupper hole is nothing more than a generic term for letting water go through, right? So some people gunnels with scuppers. Some people put scuppers back where their seats are, where their decks are, so that water can weep out. It all depends on what kind of boat you've got and what it is you're trying to do. Well, in a boat like this, when water gets in, you want it to be able to flow from one end to the other. Right? So if you get out and you're throwing it on a trailer or you just want to lift it up, all the water will run down to that end, and you can go ahead and soak it out of there with a towel, you know, that end or this end. So you always want to put scupper holes in there. So when I did the plans, I made sure that I used... Um, you know, it's not, it's not critical. Let's start with that. You just definitely want to make sure that you got enough of water to get through. Uh, but for these, I used a one inch um, hole. And so I can take a one inch force in a bit and cut that out. Uh, except down over where the uh, skeg bedding is, I did a two inch hole down there because I have to actually wrap around both sides of that. All right, and then you pull a string. So you can see I got a string going from the skeg bed up to the stem. And then it's taped down, which is basically, hopefully, the center line of your boat. Uh, and each one of your patterns has a center line on it. So really, it's just a matter of once you cut it out and do everything you need to do, dropping it right over that center line. So let's, let's just walk through the steps here of, um, of how we cut these out. And, and I think it'll make sense to you as to why the process that I use um, saves you a little bit of work in the end and uh, comes out with a neater product, all right? Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my scupper hole out, right? So I've got a one inch Forstner bit in there. And for those of you who don't know what a Forstner bit is, uh, it's just a round bit, right? It's got a, uh, a start in it in the middle, so it'll poke right through the center, and then it, it cuts a really fine circle. Uh, you can get them anywhere, big box stores, uh, any decent woodworking shop, they'll all have them. You know, depending on how much you want to spend is how long you'll own them. All right, so I'm just going to start by cutting that scupper hole out. Okay. So by having this piece of uh, throwaway wood underneath, it gives me a nice clean hole from one side to the other without chipping out. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is go do a rough cut on the bandsaw to get it close to where I need it to be. So let's go take care of that. So like everything else on the boat, when you're doing this, you got to make a decision whether you're going to cut proud of the line or cut the line. I always, always cut proud of the line because that tells me if I made any mistakes. So now I can go over to the sander and I'll just sand this down to a nice smooth curve. And then we'll stick it in the boat and just see how close we are and what we need to do to make it work. All right, well, I'm going to uh, take this one out that we've already done here. And let's take a look, see what we got. All right. I don't know how much of that you can see. 
I'm pretty much over the center line. I'll go back and check that in a second, but that's pretty darn close. And uh, so I've got a gap down here on both ends, right? Well, if you think about what's going on here, there's a number of reasons why you're going to have a gap or, you know, just the opposite. Now, I can tell you after having done all these, every one of them had a little bit of a gap down there. A couple reasons. Uh, first off, the boat might tend to, after you take all the forms and everything off, it might tend to come in a little bit. And, you know, all it takes is it for, for it to come in a half an inch and it'll start to produce, you know, what you're seeing down there. The other thing is, is this boat has fiberglass on the inside, right? So, you know, when you're working on a CAD system, it's in the perfect world, which is, you know, only the thickness that you tell that that's in there. So I can tell you just by looking at this, you know, see it rocks a little bit here. That's because there's nothing at the bottom grabbing it that if I just go back to the sander and I take just, I go about halfway up on either side and just bend that curve about a 30 second, maybe, maybe up to a 16th of an inch, that this will start to drop in there. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. All right. Well, that looks real good. Nice and solid, good and flat. And there's a couple other checks you can do. You know, you've got the one before it that you can look at. Well, in this case, it would be two before it because that one's not glued in. But you, you can count down the number of strips, assuming all your strips are identical, and they should be. You can count down the number of strips that it takes to get here. So from this last one that was glued in, I'm down about oh, one full strip. And I'm down about one full strip on both sides. So that's a beautiful thing. So it's exactly where it ought to be. All right, so now we got something that's uh, the right size. So what we got to do is glue it in place. So I got a couple of tricks that I can show you there too. Uh, why don't we go over to the bench and, and we'll take care of that right now. Okay, well, if you're anything like me, you like to minimize the amount of uh, hand sanding that you're doing inside the boat. And because if you could do it with a machine out here, you're better off anyway. You're going to do a better job. So I just take a razor knife and I score the center line. And I'm going to go ahead and pull up that pattern on both sides. And that leaves me with a nice scored center line, right? So now I'm just going to take and sand that down, get that glue off of there, right? Because the epoxy is going to be going on there. We don't want glue on there. Okay, so make sure you can't feel any of that goo on there anymore. The epoxy needs to seep into that wood. So now I'm going to go back to where I made that score mark and make a pencil mark. And what this allows me to do is go back over to the boat, check everything out, make sure she's good to go. Alright, so you go ahead and put that in the boat, get it centered where you want it to be, check both sides. Make sure you're happy with that. I think that I am. And then make a mark. Because you're going to be taking it back out. You don't want to have to keep looking for center. So I make a mark. Make a mark down each side. All right, now I just got to scuff that up a little bit and I'm going to put this in with some instant epoxy. Okay, now for this piece, I know from experience, and doing the other ones that I got to the point where this wasn't going to be enough. So simple old trick, fill this to the 10 milliliter level, put it in, made a mark, get 10 more, put it in, make a mark. So now I can do 20 milliliters instead of 10. And the first gradation on this is 30 milliliters. So I was good to go. All right. So I am going to uh, go ahead and mix my instant epoxy up here. And again, you don't have all the time in the world, but you're good to go right up until the time that you pull the cork on the hardener. All right, so I have just, just over 10. So I'm gonna put twice that amount in. Good. All right, and you want to give it about 30 seconds worth of stir. Making sure that you get everything down from the sides that you can. Get it mixed really well. 
you get about, I'm going to say two minutes working time with this or so. So you want to spend about 20, 30 seconds stirring it. Make sure you've got everything ready so that you're not guessing when it's time to go. I'm going to use an acid brush here. And first thing I'm going to do is put it on the wood. Get a nice thick coat. Trying to be neat. And make sure that you get the scupper. Not because you're going to glue it to anything, but you want to water seal that. And it's a lot easier to do it now than it is to do it later. Okay. And if you're concerned about working with epoxy, whether it's the instant epoxy or the regular epoxy, go ahead and use it on some scrap wood. Build up your confidence. All right. So now we're just going to put this in place. I can still see those lines. So if I put it back there, it should be centered again. Now you just want to put some pressure on it. Get any squeeze out there. I've got this putty knife, this plastic putty knife is right here, ready to go, so I can get the excess out. And again, you definitely want to do this now, as opposed to waiting for it to dry. Well, that's most of it. So now, it's probably got about another minute before she starts to set. So I'm just going to go ahead, make sure it's in place one last time, and give it some pressure. And then I'm just going to hold this for two or three minutes, and then uh, it's going to be set enough for me to let go. Good. All right, so I got, uh, what, I got one, two, three left to do. Now, I've just shown you that whole process start to finish. It's really that simple. The only one on this particular boat that's a little bit trickier is the one that's uh, up front there, or excuse me, in the stern uh, by the uh, skeg bed. And the only reason for that is because the boat starts to curve inwards, right? So you gotta do the same trick with that that we did with the, uh, the rear seat supports. Um, you, you either gotta clamp it down on the bench and sand it, that angle on it, or you know, put your angle on your oscillating sander there, or your uh, bench sander. You know, and, and again, those of you who know me, I, you know, we go out of our way in this shop when we're filming especially to use only tools that are available at the big box shop. You know, stuff that guys and gals would have at home. Um, because we don't think you should have to go out and buy really expensive stuff to make this happen. So, you know, wh when I tell you that that uh, 120 to 300 dollar sander, depending on how good you go, is worth it. I mean it. You know, it'll uh, it'll not just because it makes it easier, but because you'll do a better job. You know, you'll you'll you know, it's one thing to spend 15 minutes at the spindle sander trying to make something perfect. It's another thing to spend three or four hours with something clamped to the bench trying to make it perfect. Right. So you know, something that takes less time, you're probably going to put a little bit more effort into. So I would recommend it. Um, okay, so need to finish that up. Uh, but before I do, we've been doing some work on the seats and I thought I'd get you caught up with what we're doing down there. So we did a little bit of work on the seat back here, the uh, stern seat. Uh, and this is where you gotta let the other half of your brain work, the, the artistic half a little bit. This, this, to get to where we've gotten right now is nothing different than some of the things we've already done. Right? So we've scribed already when we, when we did these here. Uh, you're doing the same thing here. So the first thing I did was I cut a, uh, about a six inch wide blank and I put it up against here, scribed it out, cut it. Um, if everything's going well, once you cut that and you sand it and you put it into place and you cut your angle back here with your chop saw, you should be able to flip it right over and put one over here. And we were indeed able to do that. 
So that means both sides of our boat are the same. That's a beautiful thing. Okay, so it was all scribed in, and you know now I had to kind of think of a way um, where we could fill the inside of the seat here without having a lot of special tools. And here's what I came up with. Um, you know, typically what we might do here is fill this in with slats and make designs and all that. But you know, it, it can get you need a lot of jigs to pull that off safely. Um, let me while I'm thinking about it, let me just say this outright. Um, you should never take a board and remove the fence on your table saw and just try, try to push it through freehand. Um, I've done it in the past. I have a scar on my hand here that says you shouldn't do it again and I won't do it again. And that's when I became a real believer in jigs. And uh, if I can't buy it, I'll make it. And sometimes I'll make it even if I can buy it. All right, so uh, everything that I'm gonna show you here is all just basic stuff that uh, you can do at home safely. So after you've cut this using either your jigsaw or your saber saw or your bandsaw, whatever it is you have, and you're happy with the fit, then you have to figure out how to fill in that blank. So um, we've built a blank over here, which kind of goes nicely with the front, and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna make these two fit. Then all I did was I took some hot glue and I glued some sticks across here to hold it all in place. And that's just simply so that I can pick it up as one unit. Now, uh, the only one here that's important is the front one. And it's particularly important in our case because we did make a rear seat blank that's going to match the deck. In other words, we have a piece of purple hot running right up the middle of it, which is going to shoot right up towards the front of the boat. I think it's going to be a nice little detail. Well, in order to do that right and make sure that we're not skewed off one way or the other, I have to know not only where the center in the back is, but where the center up here is as well, which means that this needs to be going straight across, right? So again, the easiest thing for me to do was I've got a form right here. I can see where the form was here. I can see where the form was here. I just lined it up, <clears throat> made a couple of pencil marks, and then I glued this down in. So now I know once I find the center of this board, I'll be in the center of the boat with any luck at all. All right, so I'm going to walk this over to the bench. I'm going to show you the blank that we put together, and let's uh, we'll work on cutting that out. Just mixed up glue, same way you've seen me do it a dozen times now, and put them together. And remember, we don't need a lot of clamping pressure, so all I did was push them together with a couple of pieces of boards here and screw it down. I've already sanded it. So I'll just take these out. And so we have really nice looking blank here. All right, so this is ash, purple hot, and ash over there. So now what we need to do is basically uh, get this lined up so that we have a piece that falls right in here. Good there. So basically what I need to do is I need to draw a center line going up this accent piece right here. And now I'm going to draw my blank underneath. Let me just clean that up by putting one straight line in there. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. Now, in theory, what I should be able to do is come up any distance here. So I will come up 14 inches on this side, and I will come up 14 inches on this side. And if all goes well, when I measure now, from each one of those points across to the center, it should be the same thing. All right, so again, just to recap what I did is I centered the whole thing underneath our uh, two sides here, uh, and then I measured up the side an equidistant amount, measured across to make sure from each one of those points to the center it's the same, and that tells me that this whole thing is centered. Now I'm gonna take this over to the table saw jig, and I'm gonna cut this out 
Uh, and when I do, I'm going to be careful to um, leave the line, right? Because remember, when I drew that line, it was on the inside of the two sides, right? So I can see the line now. I want to see the line when I'm done. So when I'm cutting this on the jig, I want to make sure that, that line is left. All right, so whether you have a jig that you've built for your table saw or if you've gone out and, you know, buy them, I've seen them online for as little as $25. Basically, all it does is allow you to run wood through at an angle. I'm going to do that right now. All right, so we cut our blank. And I am I'm within about oh, a 30 second of an inch here. So that's no problem. I can take these glue sticks off and push this all together, get a nice tight fit. And you can see, you know, it's gonna be a beautiful thing. You know, what we're gonna do now is basically make a scallop that comes around, goes down, and goes back up again. And now I'm going to glue this up the same way we glue everything else up. I'm going to, uh, uh, first thing, you know, before you take it apart, make sure you put registration marks coming across so that you know it goes, how it goes back together. One, one, two, two, registration here, registration here. And then uh, now I can take it apart, put it back together and glue it, throw it in a boat, and then we can start to make some designs. It's really that simple.